move on to the Australian $10 bill now with the writer, the poet and the socialist Mary Gilmore. Mary was born into the Cameron family in Wagga Wagga in 1865. Sorry, Wagga Wagga. I said about amazing Australian names. That is another amazing Australian name. Her dad was a Scot who had lots of stirring stories to tell the kids. That's probably what set Mary along the road to storytelling, poetry and teaching. She started her teacher training at the age of 12. What? She worked hard at the job, one of her appointments being to Silverton, near Broken Hill. She started her teacher training at the age of 12. Now, I assume that's because worker rights and everything was different and, you, you know, you had to start at a younger age. But that is dedication, isn't it? Straight away from that early age to know you want to do something that helps others. That's impressive in itself. Life was tough in that outback area. And it was there that Mary learned that if workers didn't fight for their rights, they wouldn't get them. It was her introduction to working class politics. Hang on. Soon after Mary arrived in Sydney, she was introduced to Henry. Young Lawson took one look at Mary and fell in love. Mary took one look at Henry. <laughs> what a skinny, gawky whim. <laughs> That's probably what Charlie, my wife, thought about me. She moved to Sydney, where she met the famous poet Henry Lawson. Lawson showed her the poverty that existed in the beautiful city of Sydney, where rat catchers regularly cleaned out the suburbs, now replaced by the southern end of the Harbour Bridge. Isn't that interesting about cities and like Sydney back in the day? And actually, you get it with all cities where you get a central hub normally where the wealthy uh they they preside and on the outskirts quite often that's where you get the the poorer people who struggle to make ends meet but they have to be in that town or city to try and make the money but the conditions are so bad and i think you still get that to an extent today to some extent i think um not not in the same standard where well this scenario but to still, to still some extent. One of the men who argued most strongly for a better distribution of wealth in Australia was a charismatic man called William Lane. But the 1890s was depression time and the workers were getting nowhere. Lane decided to take a number of followers to Paraguay to set up a perfect society where everything would be shared. Mary was one of the settlers in this new Australia, and it was there that she met her husband, Will Gilmore, and they had a son, Billy. One more drink and I'll have those tonsils out in no time. But I'm having a baby, whatever, oh no, was he a drunk? Paraguay wasn't paradise, however, and the Gilmores decided to return to Australia. They settled on Will's parents' farm at Casterton in Victoria. While there, Mary was writing articles for a number of magazines, including The Worker. When Will decided to buy a farm at Cloncurry in Queensland, Mary said, no thank you, and moved to Sydney. What, what a crazy, crazy life already. So she's gone from learning to teach at the age of 12, moving to Sydney, uh, <laughs> maybe getting in with the wrong person and but she's clearly stuck by her guns that's what's impressive about her as well you know i don't need no man she's sticking to her guns and she wants to make the make the country the world a better place for years she edited a women's section in the worker which included household hints but also articles educated women in politics and society but Mary was always her own woman and quite capable of getting into a fight. She upset her bosses at the worker and resigned before she was sacked. During the Second World War, she lived at King's Cross, where there were often brawls between Australian and American soldiers. It was during the war that she wrote some of her best poetry. 
She grew old in the company of many of the thinkers, artists, writers and influential people of Sydney, though she sometimes wondered if she'd done the wrong thing by abandoning her husband. When she died, she was cremated and her ashes taken to Will's grave in Cloncurry. You can find out more about Mary Gilmore in my biography of her. So this was clearly, Mary was clearly a strong, independent woman. The fact that her husband, and think of the, the time and the era of, you know, women quite often were meant to do as they're told by their husbands. You know, he went and bought a farm and she said, no, that's not what I want. She wants to do and make things better. And she went to Sydney, a strong, independent woman. Maybe what, what was, was Mary Gilmore, one of the first, first women to, to push women's rights? Maybe. Uh, certainly, possibly in Australia anyway. Um, she seems like a real character that you don't want to mess with, but almost in a good way. She wants to make things better. If she was a socialist, then you know that her, her thoughts and her values were right. Whether you like it or not, and I'm talking about socialism, not communism, but the socialism side of people, if you've got that in you, you care about people. You care about people because you want the poorest of the poor to not be suffering. And you want them to have a life where they can build for themselves and achieve. And I think that's so admirable Admiral? Admirable, <laughs> admirable, admirable uh, of, of Mary and anyone that has similar views. You know, we are all the same. Man, woman, rich, poor. And we just want to be given a chance, I think. And that's clearly what she strived for. A fantastic story. I'm sure there's more to this lady. Um, this is this is obviously just a scan over, but in a, in a little bit of good detail I think so that's Mary Gilmore she is on one side of the 10 Aussie dollar bill thank you so much for watching please continue to watch this series that I'm creating looking at all the characters on the Australian dollar notes and I'll catch you next time